Hey everybody, so it was just my birthday. And what do we bookish people do on our birthdays? We buy ourselves books. So today I'm here to tell you about all of the books that I bought myself to celebrate my birthday and make your TBR explode. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. It is a beautiful Monday. Part two of the Russell is doing a bunch of videos on one day because I took the day off and I'm just doing things for myself. And I wanted to make sure I knocked out amazing videos for y'all with great content and amazing books. And today I'm here to talk about one of my favorite things, buying myself books for my birthday. Um, yeah, I have to say that I love doing it and I will do it every year and sometimes I do it when it's not even my birthday. So today I'm here to tell you about a, quite a stack. I, I don't, I, I spoil myself when it comes to the birthday book buying. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your good reads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore. You know they need us now, they need us forever. Or if you're a library user, clearly I bought them. They're all available. You can get your hands on a copy at the library if that is how you get your reading. Um, support your libraries. They know that you need them. Do you see this really cool ink and paper blog uh, book that was made? My friend Heaven made this for me for my birthday, so it is now now in the videos. Um, so let's get started with books that were inspired purchased by Ryan. Everyone knows Ryan on my channel. You know he's been around because he's one of my favorite bookish people. He's my local book buddy um, and he writes amazing reviews on Instagram. So if you have not, have not um, uh, followed him on Instagram, I highly, highly recommend it. The first book I bought was Valorio by Xavier Navarro Aquino out from Harper Villa. This, um, so I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to describe this, but basically we, I'm going to start with, we have a woman and she is dealing with the grief, the loss of her daughter who was killed, I believe, in like an avalanche caused by a hurricane. And she sort of carries her daughter around with us. And at the then we wind up, she sort of winds up going to this place called Memoria, Memoria, which is a cult um, village utopia led by this, you know, enigma enigmatic man and charismatic, maybe a better word. And um, he's trying to create this utopia. And we have, you know, these other characters that show up there, a young boy sort of on the verge of manhood, a woman very like stern, very like strong and willed. And these people, as they sort of become part of this utopia, need to then decide whether or not they really buy into this man's message and whether or not they're going to follow him or do they really stand in antithesis to him, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, Ryan raved about it. It sounds fantastic. That's Valario by Xavier Navarro Aquino, out now from Harper Via Books. Okay, next is Tell Me How to Be by Neil Patel. This is out from Flatiron Books. Um, this book has tripped me up a little bit um, because I've been trying to summarize it in my head. And yeah, my words and my brain are not on the same page all the time. But this is really a mother-son story. Um, Rainu Amin is a woman who is um, one year after the death of her husband, sort of... Um, coming into that anniversary and trying to sort of formulate through that. And she's usually like a very put together woman, but this sort of anniversary is causing her to sort of, you know, just sort of, it says she watches soap operas and sim simmers in old resentment. And then she has her son who currently lives in Los Angeles. She lives in Illinois and he's a songwriter and he sort of fled Illinois to, you know, flee sort of what the past of that city had done to him. She decides she's going to sell the home and he comes home in order to sort of help her do that and also get over the past, get over it you know, and she sort of create. she goes on, I believe it's Facebook or something, and messages an old flame, basically, and that relationship and sort of how it affects her. But then we have the son that sort of comes back and slips back into some bad habits living in that town where he grew up. Um, I've heard that this book has a lot of music. Ryan talks about that in his review. This was actually one of his top three books of the year so far picks, and he created a playlist on Apple of all of the music music in it. So super excited about that. 
So this is Tell Me How to Be by Neil Patel out from Flatiron Books. Okay. The next book I bought just because I had wanted to read it and I saw it on the shelf and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick it up for myself. And that's Revival Season by Monica West. Um, this is out from Simon and Schuster. Um, this is the story of a 15 year old young girl and every 15 year old girl and every summer her family travels, goes traveling around as her father puts on revivals, healing services. And I, you, you can just sort of see what it is like, you know, you, we've all seen this sort of set up and get up and all of that kind of stuff. And then uh, there's this one event that really sort of takes it out of her father and she witnesses um, a horrific act of violence, a shocking act, and sort of how that act of violence changes everything she knows. Um, I've heard a lot of really good things about this book from people I trust, so I'm really excited about it. So this is Revival Season by Monica West, out from Simon & Schuster. Okay, then, um, inspired by my friend Chris Corleander, who I don't talk to enough, and I really should, because she's fantastic. I watched her do an interview with this author um, for the Newburyport Literary Festival, and I believe they record all of their online events. So if I talk about this book and you're interested, um, you can go watch it. It's a great interview, and the author is phenomenal. And that is Taste Makers, um, Seven Immigrant Women Who Revolutionized Food in America by Mayuk Sen, and I'm going to hold that up right there because it is a little bit hard to see on the camera. This is out from Norton. Um, this is exactly as it says. It's nonfiction. It's sort of a dive into seven women that just really changed American cooking um, from Chinese food to Indian food to French culinary technique um, and sort of the shadow of Julia Child and how she sort of sits in all of these stories in some way. Um, he, I just, I can't explain it well enough um, because all I keep thinking about is how brilliant he was in that conversation. Um, I followed him immediately on Instagram and I was totally in awe. Um, I heard it's actually a fantastic audiobook as well. Um, and yeah, so if you like food, if you like hearing about the how um, food and how, the food that we eat every day, things that we consider part of American culture have been affected by these um, amazing women uh, chefs and cooks. Um, and he even talks about how they were all, in a way, home cooks first and how they sort of, you know, championed the home cook. He, he was really great. And Chris did a great job of interviewing him. So that's Tastemaker, Seven Immigrant Women Who Revolutionized Food in America by Mayuk Sen. And yeah, super, super good conversation. I cannot actually wait to read that one. Then I did a little bit of science fiction shopping. It's, I guess it's fantasy. I guess it's fantasy. A book that is everywhere. It really is everywhere. And I believe it is shortlisted for the Hugo this year. And that's She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is out from Tor. I've actually started this one. You can see I am partway into it. How am I? I'm 170 pages into it. That's not part way. I'm a good distance into this. Um, this is set in the like the sort of a um, alternate 1300s China. Um, and this is what I'm going to say because I don't want to give away too much. We have a young woman who is a, very, a young girl, really, who is uh, one of two remaining children in a the household. There's the father, her older brother, and her. And... Um, they go and they get their fortunes read and the brother is told he is going to be famous and important and great and she is told that she really has no future there's nothing to be seen there but then one night something happens and her brother's name is available i'm just gonna put that and she takes over and she goes in she becomes a monk and she becomes part of a revolution and that is all I'm going to say. It is quite page turning. Um, and yeah, you know, it's got sort of that like Mulan esque vibe to it, but way more complex and complicated and just so innovative. It's really, really good so far. So that's She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And this is out from Tor.com. Actually, this is just Tor. Sorry about that. Okay. This, um, hopefully this video won't be too long, but I'm noticing I bought myself a lot of books. Um, Brian and I actually went to a couple of book things I'll talk about, but we went and saw our first author 
since 2020 um, together at a very cute little bookstore in San Francisco called Fabuliosa Books. And we saw the author of The Town of Babylon, and that's Alejandro Varela. And this book is out from Astra House. And we got to hear him speak about this book. And um, so at the heart of this book, this is a, a man, he is in public health, his relationship, his marriage is falling apart because he's just found out his husband has been unfaithful, and he goes home for his 20-year high, high school reunion and really just sort of to reboot, right? Reboot. And when he gets there, he runs into old friends, his first love, all of that sort of stuff. And it's about community, and it's about... Um, defining oneself and the importance of sort of those roots that you you um sort of put down and how not having roots can be can be tough but you can get through it but does it make it easier for you in the future i hope i did that right i'm sorry alejandro if that wasn't very good um he is in public health by trade um and um he was just so how do you say it he was just so smart in his like dissection and discussion of how important, important public health is to sort of our overall society. And he made me think about things that I hadn't um, thought about in a lot of ways. I'm very fascinated to see how he made them part of his narrative. Um, so that's The Town of Babylon by Alejandro Varela. And this is out from Astra, Astra House right now. Cool. Okay. Hopefully I did okay selling that. Um, and then for my actual birthday, so just so y'all know, my birthday was on Sunday, the May 8th. It's Mother's Day, right? I was actually born on Mother's Day um, many, many, many years ago. So it's always sort of a nice sort of um, crossover when that happens and hits again. You know, you can talk to your mom about being born on Mother's Day and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was the Bay Area Book Festival this weekend and um, of my birthday. And so on my birthday, Ryan and I went up there and we saw two amazing panels, one on Irish writers where I got to see, and you'll see, um, the authors are in this stack because I bought all of their books and got them signed. Um, and then we saw um, Douglas Stewart, oh my gosh, you know, in conversation with Nadifa Mohammed, who, you know, Douglas won the booker. Naifa was shortlisted for the booker. Um, and they were interviewed by Gabby Wood, who is like in charge of the booker. It was like one of those bookish instances that was just perfect. Um, and then I was walking around, I found um, the table for, um, okay, hold on one second, Two Lines Press, which is one of my favorite translated uh, fiction producers, and one of the authors that I've read by them that I absolutely loved had a new book and was there. So it was just a wonderful birthday day. And so I did buy myself some books. So let's start with that author, the Japanese author. He has a new book called out, um, At the Edge of the Woods by Matsuka Ono, translated by Julia Winters Carpenter. And um, he signed my book, y'all, in Japanese. How beautiful is this? Um, I have no idea what it says. I will work on the translation. Um, he was lovely. Um, and his first two books are so good. This one seems maybe a little bit more creepy than the ones that I've read before. But this is about a family of three. They move into a house that's on the edge of this, these woods. And they can sort of, they hear like chatter, laughter coming out of these woods. So much so that it sort of disturbs the mother who's about to have the second child that she goes back home to have the child. And the father and son are left there on the edge of the woods um, and all of sort of what that means for them and what's there. Can we take a moment and look at this beautiful cover? I also wanna say Two Lines Press had these beautiful bookmarks that I cannot even get over. So I will definitely tell you, I have not read uh, Matsuku's newest book, but both of his first, uh, both of his other books, Echo on the Bay and Lion Cross, Cross Point, are fantastic. Um, if you have not read it, if you love Japanese literature, I highly recommend it. And this beautiful book is out now. So that's At the Edge of the Woods by Mas Masatsuga Ono. Oh, I do it so well when I'm not thinking in my head. Translated from the Japanese by Juliet Winters Carpenter. Just take a moment. That book is so beautiful. Okay. The next, one of the authors that was on the Irish panel um, and is one of 
one of those authors that I actually own all of her books. I brought all of them and had her sign them all. So thank you very much, Sarah Moss. But her newest book is called The Fell. Um, you may know Sarah ha Ma Moss. She wrote The Tidal Zone, which is probably my favorite book by her. Then she was like long listed for the Women's Prize for the Ghost Wall. She just had Summer Water come out. And then this is The Fell. This is sort of her pandemic novel. Um, and um, she was... She was so good. Oh, it's like when you meet someone that you've always sort of idolized through their work. So The Fell is the, is the story of a young woman named Kate who is in quarantine. And she is in a mandatory two-week lockdown in quarantine. And she can't stand it anymore. So she decides to go on a walk, leave her apartment, go on a walk on the marsh, sort of convinces herself she's not going to run into anybody. She's just going to be right back and it's going to be fine. And she's not right back. <laughs> Something happens and um, all of that. So um, Sarah Rudd, just a small portion of this, reminded me of her beautiful lyrical language um, and sort of maybe that emptiness we all felt during parts of the pandemic. Um, so that's The Fell by Sarah Moss. This is out from FSG here in the US. And um, yeah, she signed it. And um, yeah, I was a bit starstruck, if I'm honest. And she signed all eight books that I brought along, just saying. Okay, the next person that was on that panel it was Colin um, Barrett, and this is his short story collection that just came out in the United States called Homesick, and he signed mine too. It was very nice to meet him. Um, he currently lives in Toronto, um, and he this collection of short stories is mainly set in sort of the small rural town where he grew up in Ireland. There's one story in Toronto where he currently lives, which is sort of like he said his COVID story. Um, and there was a really interesting discussion about, you know, how long do you have to live somewhere before you feel comfortable to write about that place? Um, so that was very, very interesting. Uh, Brandon Taylor read this before it came out, highly recommended this story collection. Um, yeah, and it was very interesting. He deals with sort of this one community and all the interchanging pieces of it. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I think the cover is beautiful. So this is Homesickness by Colin Barrett. And did I say homesick? Did I forget the Ness when I said this title earlier? Oh, goodness. Um, out from Grove here in the United States. It just came out. I mean, it's blurbed by Brandon Taylor, Salon Rooney, Cole <laughs> Toybin, and Rowdy Doyle. So don't take my word for it. Take those brilliant author's words for it. Um, yeah. I believe he won, if I'm not mistaken, I think he won a 5 under 35 National Book Foundation. Yes. And he run, won the Rooney Prize for Ar Irish Literature. So... And I think that's only his second collection, so good for him. Um, the other uh, author that was on that panel is uh, Claire Louise Bennett, and this is her new novel, Check Out 19. She also wrote a book called Pond that was um, out a while ago that I think everyone saw. I can totally see the cover in my head, um, 100%. Um, and this book, the way she described it is how I'm going to describe it to you, because I bought it based upon how she described it when she talked about it. This is a book about books. This is a book about literature. This is a book about reading. This is a book about the love of all of those things. Um, and the section she read led me to believe it's going to be hilarious because she was hands down hilarious, like so funny. Um, and yeah, I don't want to know more about that, about the book so much because I just... You know, I love books about books. I love books about literature, falling in love with literature, all of that stuff. And um, yeah, I'm super excited about it. And that is Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett, out now here from Riverhead Books in the United States. Last but not least, so I'm going to caveat this by saying I also bought Young Mungo, um, the U.S. version. I had already ordered from the U.K., the U.K. version. Um, and I had Shuggy Bane and I had a, an arc of Young Mungo. I had Douglas Stewart sign all of those. I'm not going to talk about them today because I've already told you Young Mungo is currently my favorite read of the year. Um, and, um, yeah, enough said on this channel about how brilliant I think that book is. Now, shame on me for not realizing how be uh, brilliant... Um, this author was and not having picked this book up, but I was totally okay with it because I was able to see her 
meet her and get her to sign a copy of The Fortune Men by N Nadifa Mohammed, shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Um, this is based on a true story set in 1952's Cardiff, and it's the story of Mahud, Ma Mahud, Mahmoud, Matin, I'm saying that wrong, and he is a Somali sailor who was a crime, accused of a crime he didn't commit and wound up actually losing his life because of it. And <clears throat> the way that they talked about this book was so engaging. So this is a story of a man who comes to Cardiff from Somalia and sort of has this sense of pride in himself. He speaks like five languages. He is a stoker, which is a terrible, terrible job, but a job that was really given to immigrants because the people of Wells and Cardiff didn't want to do it themselves. Um, and they were looking for someone to take the fall um, for this crime, and they chose him, and he knew it, and they knew it, but it didn't stop happening what happened. And Nadifa um, creates a story around him. Um, I, I'm definitely going to get all of her books. I just, I don't know how to say it, but when you meet someone who is just, their brilliance shines through every word that they say, they're caring in every conversation that they have. It just, she was so engaging in a way that I was kind of starstruck. I didn't even know really what to say with to her when I was in line asking her to sign my book. Um, so yeah, this book is uh, sounds fantastic. The way she described it, Cardiff is sort of its own character in it. Um, and uh, sort of the story of a man who should never have lost his life and who moved to Cardiff and became like felt like he belonged there. I believe he mel he married a Welsh woman, had children. Like that was his home now and it sort of turned on him um, and all of that. So yeah, The Fortune Men by M Nadifa Mohammed out from Kanaf here in the United States. Highly, highly, highly recommend just watching her talk about her books, read her books. Um, I hope that she wrote the, read, reads the audio of this because I could listen to her talk forever. I really could. So there you go. Let me see. If, I don't think I can get all of these in a pile, y'all, without them dropping everywhere. So I hope you enjoyed the books I bought myself for my birthday. Hopefully, I have inspired you to pick up uh, one or two or all of them. Um, and as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally. And until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone. <laughs>